Welcome, everyone. Uh, and welcome to all those people who are joining us online. So shall we commence our service in the same way that churches have started their services over the generations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we look at the resurrection of Lazarus today, we remember that hope is not only a life and death matter. Hope is a life in death matter. Hope finds its greatest challenge and shines its greatest light when life stands in the face of death and affirms that God remains trustworthy. Ezekiel is called to prophesy such hope in the valley of dried bones and lost dreams. The psalmist proclaims hope from the depths as one who waits for the gift of a morning yet to dawn. And Jesus, stricken with a grief born of love, speaks hope into Lazarus' tomb, calling his friend forth as a sign of God's glory and of our hope. Please join me in the call to worship. Our lives can feel all disjointed as though they were a valley of dry bones. But the Spirit of God brings connection and continued to our lives. Fear had gripped the friends and family of Lazarus. But Jesus released the bonds of fear when he released the bonds of death from Lazarus. Lord, as we gather to worship you, Help us hear your words of hope and courage. Lord, give us open hearts and spirits to receive your healing love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 4. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. (coughs) If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins.
Romans 8, 6 to 11. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit of life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realms of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit of Christ. They do not belong to you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, who who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. This is the word of the Lord. Now a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay ill, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, This illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she had said this, 
She went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Oh, good morning everyone. Jesus, Death Slayer. Let's pray. Father, this morning we're talking about death and life. And as John said, life in death. Father, make the word come alive to us this morning. Holy Spirit, speak to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, two weeks ago, Alan and I attended two funerals in two days. One was a Catholic Mass, and the other never mentioned God at all. One was hopeful that the young man who had died would see the Lord. The other was content to dwell on the person who had died. We remembered a wife, a mother, a friend, her good deeds and her distinctive personality. This woman had abandoned any pretense of faith as a young person after attending a Catholic primary school and I don't know why, we never did discuss the reason, but she was convinced there was nothing about Christianity that interested her. Well, we've all heard the story of Lazarus, and I'm sure my friend must have as well. Lazarus, the man Jesus raised from the dead. 
My friend, however, did not know that Jesus had conquered death. Jesus was the death slayer. He slayed death. He eradicated death. Jesus the warrior. Now you probably think I've been looking at Blake's movies about comic heroes. <laughs> but our kids love to see good overcoming evil. And they're how these heroes uh, use their supernatural powers to conquer evil and rescue all those in distress. Of course, Jesus is much more than this. But he has supernatural powers and he does conquer evil. Jesus is a warrior. And today we hear how he went and slayed death. We hear how he revealed his power to a watching world. Well, Lazarus, we're told a few things about him. Firstly, he was sick. Secondly, he lived at Bethany, not far from Jerusalem. Thirdly, he belonged to a family. He had two sisters. And fourthly, we're told that Jesus loved him. Lazarus' sisters reminded Jesus of this. The person you love. It stands out, doesn't it? Lord, the one you love is sick. If Martha had been sick, do you think Mary and Lazarus would have said, Lord, come, because the one you love is sick? Of course they would have, and Jesus would have come. He loved the whole family, we're told. And John, the writer of the Gospel, tells us that at the Last Supper, the one reclining next to Jesus was the one that Jesus loved. Well, do you think Peter didn't feel loved? Do you think they all thought Jesus loved John more than them? No. Of course, Jesus doesn't pick favourites. That is not to say that he had particular friends with whom he spent time with. He had a man who had, he was a man, he had friends. But the lesson for us here is that we are loved. All of us. And there's a lot of talk today about <coughs> inclusivity. Inclusion, we have to include everyone. Well, let me tell you that Jesus brought in inclusion. It all began with him and in his church. Inclusivity. It's been happening for 2,000 years. The media think that it's something new. No, it isn't. And Paul cannot help talking about God's love for his people as he prays in Ephesians 3. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So Jesus receives word that Lazarus is sick and dying. But the text tells us that Jesus, although he loved this family, Mary, Martha and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for, the, for a further two days. He also reassured his disciples that Lazarus' sickness would not end in death. Well, we know that Lazarus went through death, but he would not die. The time lapse is stressed in the passage. It would have taken a couple of days for the message about Lazarus to get to Jesus. Jesus delayed for a couple of days and then he had to, took him a couple of days to get back to Bethany. So was there something special about the place where Jesus was at that time? Do you think the bakeries could have been better at that part of, in that part of the country? Or maybe the fish and chips were cheaper? Or maybe the kosher takeaway was better. 
No, none of these. We're told, no, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. The raising of Lazarus would display the glory glory of God through what Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, would do. He will bring life out of death. And isn't that what he has been doing for 2,000 years? Well, in those hot countries 2,000 years ago, a burial had to take place within 24 hours. The corpse had to be quickly disposed of. This, however, was before professional medical. Doctors came on the scene, and sometimes as the coffin was being carried out, there was a knock from inside the coffin, and miraculously the dead person came back to life. Now, this happened in Western society too, not a century ago. Why do we call the get-together after a funeral a wake? Because on many such occasions, the dead person woke up. So Jesus wanted to make sure that Lazarus was dead. And no one could say, oh, he was really not dead, he was just asleep. In fact, in verse 39, practical Martha says that they couldn't take the stone away where Lazarus lay because after four days there's now a bad odour. Well, the words about the stench of a dead corpse have been sanitised in our Bibles to read bad over. But in the King James Version, it says, He stinketh. Well, I don't know about you, but if there is a bad odour in my house, I usually say, "Mm, something smells badly. And as I get closer to the smell, I go, Alan, it stinks. (laughs) (laughs) That is what Martha says. The stench will be appalling, Jesus. You cannot open that tomb. There'll be a terrible stink. So why did Jesus delay coming to the aid of the sisters? To display the glory of God by spectacularly raising a body which was most definitely dead and decaying. There would be no question that Lazarus had just fallen asleep or his spirit had been hovering over over his body ready to enter and return to his body. The sceptics would be silenced and there was such a crowd there that the facts could not be disputed. In fact, by raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus signed his own death warrant. This, of course, he knew. Sometimes sometimes God delays in answering our prayers. Here we see the blessing of delay And we can be assured that God hears our prayers and there will be a blessing when he answers. There is also blessings while we await his answers. We develop faithfulness and perseverance and we learn endurance. Paul tells us in Romans, we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. Sometimes God demonstrates his love to us by delay. Now let's go back to the conversation that Jesus had with Martha when he arrived just outside the village. Lord, she said, if he'd been if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Does Martha realise that what she said sounds like an attack on Jesus, blaming him for Lazarus' death? It looked like that a bit, didn't it, in that movie that we saw. She probably (coughs) didn't mean it, um, but 
Maybe she realised that it could be taken that way and so immediately she backtracks and says something religious, you know. Uh, I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask, you know. So Jesus tells her that her brother will rise again. Martha knows the scriptures, she's an Orthodox Jew, and believes in the resurrection on the last day, confirming that, yes, Lazarus will rise again. Jesus is having a personal conversation with Martha. Our God is personal. He wants a conversation with each of us. So Jesus relates to Martha as someone he cares for, and he cares about what she's thinking, he wants to hear what she has to say, but he doesn't give her any sympathy, does he? He doesn't commiserate with her at all, but he rather turns the whole conversation to himself. He starts talking about himself, himself and makes the great I am statement. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Well, Jesus is saying two things. Firstly, he is the resurrection. And secondly, he is the life. The next sentence explains what he means. He says, those who believe in me will live even though they die. He can say this because he is the resurrection and we know that later he rose from the dead. He was resurrected. And because of this, all believers will live for eternity. The next part of the sentence, whoever lives by believing in me will never die. So when we believe in him, we have God, the Holy Spirit, living in us. He gives us life now and forever. He gives us his life. We have Jesus' life in us. So Jesus does comfort Martha by pointing to himself. He does this constantly throughout the Gospels, doesn't he? He is our comfort. He is our solace. He is our encourager. I could go on. Lazarus, as other sister, Mary, comes to Jesus and she says exactly what Martha said. Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. They must have been having a conversation, do you reckon? Yeah. Jesus' reaction to Mary's statement, though, is completely different to his reaction to what Martha said. The text tells us that Jesus sees Mary weeping and the people with, who were with her also weeping and possibly wailing. Mourners were hired to make up for the tears of the grieving family if and when the family's tears dried up. So there was a noise around Jesus of weeping and wailing and we are told in our version, which we heard this morning, that Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. But this is not exactly what the Greek says. This verse contains a Greek word that means to bellow with anger. It was like a roar. But we didn't see that in our sanitised version, did we? He was outraged. So Jesus is bellowing with rage. He's angry about death. He's, he's not angry with the family. The text doesn't tell us that. He, it doesn't appear to be angry with the mourners. But, and then quite suddenly he weeps. Why would Jesus weep? Because Lazarus had died. In three minutes, Lazarus is going to come out of the tomb. Jesus wept and raged against death. In the beginning, the world was created without death. There was no death. Death is the last enemy. And Jesus knew that very shortly, he would be conquering death on behalf of humanity. 
Timothy Keller writes, Jesus knew that if he raised Lazarus from the dead, the religious establishment would try to kill him. And so he knew the only way to bring Lazarus out of the grave was to put himself into the grave. He knew the only way to interrupt Lazarus' funeral was to summon his own. If he was going to save us from death, he was going to have to go to the cross and bear the judgment that we deserved. Jesus cries out, Lazarus, come out. Out comes Lazarus. But someone has said if Jesus hadn't called Lazarus by name, all the corpses in the place would have walked out. Jesus asks Martha a question. Do you believe that I am the resurrection <coughs> and the life? So all of us have to answer that question. Do you believe Jesus conquered death? Do you believe he's the death slayer? While it is still today, go to him and talk about this. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we believe but help our unbelief. You overcame death for us by dying for us. Help us to understand that dying to self brings new life to others. We trust in you, Lord Jesus, for our lives today and forever. Amen.
Are people loved by God? We will live as signs of His love. We are blessed. Uh, we are people blessed with hope. We will live in light of this hope. So go now in the love of the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, the courage of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing and power of our triune God. Amen. Amen.